The practical design and realization of a third order Butterworth filter is shown in this uh, two op amp based design. I want to show that uh, this is effectively real realizing the third order filter. Here you have uh, a first stage, which is uh, effectively realizing first order filter. And you have also a second stage here that the total together will realize a third order Butterworth filter. But what is the meaning of this? It means that the desired overall uh, frequency response for this system, which by that we mean this response effectively. So absolute value of V out uh, omega divided by V in omega to the power two, we want this to be in the form of one over one plus omega over omega naught to the power six. If we can prove that the overall frequency response of this system follows this, then we are done. Okay, um, so let's see if that is true. Well, the first stage is easy. Here you have just an RC. So we know that the voltage here simply follows a voltage division between R and C. So I can just say in S domain that let's say V, um, and this is just a simply a buffer. So assuming that both outcomes are properly biased in linear region, therefore negative feedback dominant, therefore uh, virtual short is valid. So voltage at positive input terminal and voltage at negative input terminal should be the same. So whatever V have, we have here should appear at the output as well. This is effectively just a buffer. So let's name this as Vx. So Vx shows up here at the output of the first stage. This buffer just isolate the first stage from the second stage so that it's not being loaded by the input impedance of the second stage. They are effectively buffered and separated from each other. So what I can write, just write is Vx, let me put it this way, for the first stage is easy. We can just say Vx in S domain is divided by V in, in S. Of course, it, we have to use capital letters for uh, the voltages because we are dealing with S domain, but it's just okay. So it's uh, one over CS, we divide by R plus one over CS, which become one over one plus RCS. Uh, that is the um, input output transfer function for the first stage. Now for the second stage is a little bit more involved. So for second stage, what I can write, this is done in a separate video for a general form of second stage like this for the transfer function. But since this is a special case with RR and CC and RR again, we can prove it very quickly. Um, for the second stage, we have RR. So it's a simple voltage division. If we have V out because RR and uh, we have R, the same resistors here and there is no current flowing uh, to the input of the ideal op amp. So this is a voltage division between two same resistors. And then as a result, the voltage here is VO, V out over two. So here we have V out over two. If we have V out over two, this is a op amp a linear region. So voltage at negative input terminal and positive terminal should be the same. So therefore V out over two should appear here as well. Um, the nice thing about that is if I name this voltage VY, I can just write a simple KCL around node Y and just be done with it. So there is this current that is flowing this way through this resistor R from node X to node Y. The, that current arriving at this node should be equal to this current going outward and this other current. So basically what I can say, writing a KCL at node uh, Y, I can just write uh, Vx minus Vy divide by R is equal to uh, Vy minus V out over two. This node here is V out over two. So V out over two divided by R and then plus uh, Vy minus V out over one over one over one, uh, one over CS, which become effectively just uh, CS times Vy minus V out. That's the result of KCL, of course. We can just uh, multiply both sides of this equality with R. So I'm going to do that, therefore, to simplify the whole thing. So um, I'm going to move this a little bit here so that I can just write a R here. Uh, I can just write an R here. And then I can get rid of this R in denominator. So it looks uh, nicer. Okay, so that's exactly the uh, KCL that I wanted to write. 
That's my equation number one. And what I'm going to do is if I uh, reshuffle things a little bit so that it looks nicer, I get Vx equal to uh, 2 times Vy uh, 2 plus Rcs. So I'm going to just uh, clean it up. So it looks like uh, 2, it looks like um, 2, and then plus RCS times Vy. And uh, we also have minus V or V out over 2 times R minus RCS V out. So if I just uh, factor out a minus, uh, let's say, 1 over 2, and then I get um, as a result, I get 1 plus 2 RCS times V out. One other benefit and interesting thing is, since there is no current flowing through the input of ideal op amp because ideal op amp has infinite input with in impedance, therefore R and C here uh, is, are in series, therefore there is a current that flows to R and flows to C. So effectively, <clears throat> There is a voltage division between R and C, and therefore there is a relationship that uh, enforces V out over 2 as a function of V by. So I'm going to keep this as my equation number, say, 1. And uh, I'm going to write, uh, again, the fact that R and C here are in series. I can write that V out over 2 is simply... Uh, 1 over Cs divided by R plus 1 over Cs, which means um, effectively is 1 over 1 plus RCS times Vy. And uh, just moving things around, Vy becomes um, effectively 1 plus RCS times V out over 2. This is my equation number 2. And... Uh, the benefit of this equation is I can use it to substitute for Vy in equation number one. So if I use one and two, uh, I'm going to substitute uh, for Vy using equation two as a function of V out. And if we do that, then we can define Vx just as a function of V out. And if we clean up, we get to this outcome. V out is just uh, over Vx. So let me just write it in a better way. So it's like this. V out uh, over Vx becomes, after we simplify and uh, just uh, take care of all the simplification and algebra, we get to 1 over 1 plus uh, RCS plus R squared C squared, S squared. Okay, that's very nice. That is effectively uh, the, um, uh, there is actually two, sorry. So the DC gain of this, the open loop gain of this circuit is obviously two because we have RR here that enforces the DC gain of two. Just think about it. When we are dealing with DC gain, it means the super, it means the lowest possible frequency caps are in a steady state open because impedance of cap is 1 over j omega, and for DC omega goes to 0, impedance of cap at DC goes to infinity, so the caps are open circuit for DC. Therefore, a DC VX is directly connected via two series resistor to input terminal, and uh, op amp just effectively works as a buffer with a gain of 2. It's a non-inverting uh, op amp gain, so it will provide a gain of 2. So at DC, when S is 0, we expect from the circuit to give us for the transfer function to give us gain of two as it does. So let's keep this for the second stage. So this is for the second stage. Now I'm going to use the combination of what I found here for the first stage. So let's say equation A and equation B for first and second stage. What I can write is this, V out over V in is equal to V out over Vx times Vx over Vn. And obviously, we can see that V out over Vx is the equation B 
and Vx, Vx over V in is equation A. So using equation A and B, I can just combine them and say, okay, V out over V in, which is the overall transfer function, is equal to, um, so H, H of S, overall transfer function, which is V out over V in, is basically equal to the product of B and A. So it's going to be 2 over 1 plus RCS times 1 plus RCS plus R squared, C squared, S squared. Now, the benefit is with the overall transfer function found like this, I am very close to just uh, finding whether this is really a third order Butterworth filter or not. So let's name this equation number three. And uh, uh, to prove that this is Butterworth, I just need to substitute S with J omega. So H of J omega, or simply H of omega, is equal to 2 over um, 1 plus, uh, let me just. Uh, write it so that I have enough space for further writing. So I'm going to write here. Um, so it is 2 over 1 plus j r c omega times, that's 40, 1 plus r c s, times 1 plus j r c omega. Um, and then uh, R, R squared, C squared, J squared, omega squared becomes minus R squared, C squared, omega squared. Now, the nice thing is, if you simplify this, you get to, let me change the color so that it is nicely clear. Okay, if you simplify this, you get to this outcome. That... Uh, the result is 2 over, um, I computed this earlier, so I'm going to just uh, find what I found before so that it can be written here. So uh, if you, uh, we can just do it. It's, it's all right. So what, what we can do is uh, we can just say 1 plus uh, JRC omega and uh, minus R, R squared C squared omega squared. And uh, again, plus JRC omega, so we have another, so it becomes, uh, let me just uh, take care of it in line. So we have 1 plus 2 JRC omega. And then uh, what we have is um, minus R squared C squared, so it becomes negative. There you go. So become negative. 2 times R squared, C squared, omega squared. And uh, uh, what else we have? We have um, finally minus J, um, R cube, C cube, and um, omega cube. So this is, uh, and effectively you can simplify this in the form of, if, if you want to further write it down in a proper way, you can just say, uh, you can just say, we found that h of j omega is equal to, is equal to 2 over 1 minus 2 times r squared c squared omega squared. That's the uh, real part of the denominator plus uh, let's say we factor out um, RC omega, JRC omega, so J times RC omega, and then we have 2 minus uh, RQ, R squared, C squared, omega squared. That's for the imaginary part of the denominator. Now, all I need is now, as a last step, I need to compute the absolute value or the magnitude of... Uh, h of omega squared. And if you do that, of course, um, uh, we have four in numerator. 
But for the denominator, we get the square of 1 minus 2 r uh, squared c squared omega s squared, and then plus the square of the imaginary part. If you compute that, we get to this interesting outcome. My, uh, 1 plus r to the power 6, c6, omega 6, which is exactly what we wanted for the uh, frequency magnitude response of a uh, third order Butterworth filter. Effectively, this can be written in the form of um, in the form of four over one plus omega over omega naught to the power six, where omega naught is simply one over R C. So we found that it is really it is really a th realizing a third order Butterworth filter because the magnitude response represented magnitude of response of a third order Butterworth filter. And if, for example, we are interested to see, say, uh, say for example, uh, we want omega naught to be um, just as an example. Let's say we want omega naught to be, we want f naught. Let's say we want f naught f zero. Uh, to be, let's say, uh, I'm just making it up, let's say um, 1 megahertz. Let's say we want F0 to be 1 megahertz. If that is the case for this uh, third order Butterworth filter, that means that, for example, we can select R equal to 10 kilo ohm and uh, C equal to, say, um, 16. Um, picofarad, for example, I think so, I think picofarad, and then from there, if we substitute here, we get that, um, we get exactly omega naught that is desired, because with f naught 1 megahertz, uh, omega naught becomes 2 pi 1 megahertz, and then 1 over 10k 16 picofarad, uh, you can test it, that it become equal to exactly what we want. Um, so, this is the way to practically realize a third order Butterworth filter um, that in, in a way that the second stage and first stage are buffered from each other, isolated from each other, not loading each other, and uh, we're just too often needed with uh, that uh, we can also potentially share the power supplies for the off practically. I hope that this example is helpful.